Good Monday evening. Welcome to our final lesson of the replay of the November 2009 Day of Recollection. This particular replay of lesson five only has 20 minutes, so we are going to subsidize it from the homily of that day, uh, which is 17 minutes, so that'll give us a full uh, 36 ish, 37 minutes of teachings from Father Thomas Celso, BDV, back in the day of recollection of November 2009. So, welcome again. This is the homily of lesson four, and then I'll come back in as we transition into the final lesson number five. Fiat. have Jesus uh, speaking to the uh, disciples and uh, again he says very clearly if you cannot be trusted with elusive wealth who will trust you with lasting wealth and if you have not been trusted trustworthy with someone else's money who will trust give you what is your own and and this is <clears throat> why it's faithful to be uh, important to be faithful to the church you cannot serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or be attentive to one and despise the other. Either we're faithful to Christ and his church, or we're not. Uh, you can't be... Uh, uh, the world is, is fleeting. The world is, uh, is uh, going the way of the world. Uh, St. Thomas uh, Aquinas teaches us that... Uh, uh, this altar is is more is not as real, even though we can feel it. It's not as real as uh, eternity. Uh, this this wood will dissolve and just become dust someday. But the eternal life that God wants to give us is 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 everlasting. Uh, like I said before, it's it's we're not supposed to get old, gray haired, and wrinkled and die. That's not part of God's plan. Um, uh, our, our God wants us to to embrace eternity. Uh, our God wants us to live uh, the Catholic life, the universal life. Uh, it's very, very clear. Uh, Jesus says, uh, you justify yourselves in the eyes of men, but God reads your hearts. What man thinks important, God holds in contempt. Uh, we look at, uh, again, where most people are, and uh, most people... Uh, have fallen into the Protestant work ethics of work, 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 uh, seven days a week plus overtime. And, and this is not Catholic. That's Protestant. Uh, our Catholic life is to uh, be contemplative. Um, uh, again, when, when <clears throat> before Louisa was born, there was very few sports. You know, there was wrestling, maybe, and running. Uh, uh, but after Luis was born, <clears throat> there was football, basketball, soccer, hockey, tennis, golf, you name it. It's, it all these sports came, and, and people have made sports their life. Uh, that's why they don't, a lot of children don't go to church on Sunday, because they're practicing their sport. Uh, how sad that is. Uh, you know. And then when Luisa, when she died, there was, was radio and you know, three television networks. Okay, and, and now what has happened? <clears throat> Once Louisa's cause began, the internet was on. And now we have like 500 channels on television. The internet is basically everything that you can possibly read uh, is, is there. Uh, and yet, <clears throat> our responsibility is to be contemplative. If we, if we fall into the world, if we really embrace the world, we will be mesmerized as, as Eve was mesmerized. Uh, Eve, Adam was walking and talking with God in the cool of the evening. And you look at Eve, Eve was mesmerized by the things that were around her. And that was her test. <clears throat> the devil was told, uh, and that's why he fell, that the virgin would give birth to the child. And he knew that the virgin was a human. And the child was the son of God. And that's when he said, I will not serve, I will not, I will not obey. And he fell. So when he saw Eve, here's the virgin. So he went after Eve to destroy what God had planned. Uh, and unfortunately, you know, Adam fell too. 
uh, it's because of Adam's fall, all mankind fell. Now, the devil still goes after the virgin without sin. That's his. That's what he goes after. And and what has happened to the world is the world has uh, 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 ridiculed virginity, uh, despised virginity, and uh, falling into the hands of, of Lucifer, who goes after the virgin without sin. Uh, our responsibility uh, is really to focus on the, c the Catholic life, the universal life. Uh, to protect the children, uh, you really have to be in the world, but as Jesus says, not part of the world. Uh, again, in the, in the turn of the century, <clears throat> there was the parishes, the Catholic communities. Uh, and, and, and since uh, you know, this, this past century... Uh, the, the parishes have been destroyed and uh, the people, if you want to say the Catholic faith, has uh, intermingled, if you want to say, with the world and, and, and left the Catholic, uh, the Catholic faith. Our, our responsibility is to be Catholic, is, is really to be Catholic. And we remember the, 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 the blue laws. You couldn't, you couldn't shop on Sunday. Yet one of the first... Uh, stores that opened was a Catholic store to be opened on Sunday. Uh, our responsibility is to go back to the Catholic faith, to go back to the Catholic life. Um, and when we do this, how good it is for us. Because the divine will, I mean, I've had people say to me, you know, uh, this person's a Catholic, I want to give them something on Louisa. I said, don't. Why? The person has, should be Basically, a daily communicant, praying the rosary, wearing the scapular, obedient to the church. Uh, again, if you are a faithful Catholic, then you can go to the next step. But if you're not faithful, it's basically uh, uh, pearls in front of swine. Uh, what, what, is, what is important to Jesus, is he keeps hidden. And we have to do the same thing. It's not that... Uh, um, uh, this is, it's not that it's not for everybody, but at this point, you've got to be sure that when you give this gift, they, they want to embrace it. So um, what I find is the, the Catholics who are open to life uh, are open to the divine will. Uh, if you're not open to life, if you're, if you're basically you're not being obedient to the Catholic Church, uh, and what happens at that point is if you say no to life, you say no to God, you say no to love, you say no to the divine will. And, and that's why, how many, what's the percentage of faithful Catholics? It's very, very few. Very, very few. As a matter of fact, the majority of Catholics voted for a, a man who is uh, pro-abortion and wants to kill not millions of babies, but billions. Uh, how sad that is. Our responsibility is to be Catholic. And, and uh, what, everything that we think, say, and do must be of the Catholic faith. So we have to look at what Jesus is saying. You justify your sights in the eyes of men, but God reads your hearts. What man thinks important, God holds in contempt. What our Lord is asking of us is that uh, we let go of the things that are holy and good and saintly. And that's very difficult for many Catholics to do. What Jesus is asking us is to embrace the divine. And again, most people are comfortable with the religious things, the holy things, the saintly things. And yet Jesus is saying, I want more from the Catholics. I want, I want that universal life to be their everything. So he's, he's really offering to us uh, a life that the world rejects. Uh, he's offering to us a, a Catholic life, a contemplative life. And what does that mean? That means that we have to let go of the things of this world in order to embrace the things of heaven. Uh, and, and this is what the divine will is. The divine will is the fulfillment of the Our Father. May your kingdom come on earth in us as, it's in, as the, the divine will is in heaven 
in the saints in Louisa. We want to possess the true life of Jesus and the true life of Mary. So the Lord is going to make it easy for us uh, because uh, the uh, Catholics voted for their wallets. God's going to give them their wallets, but there's not going to be anything in them. God's going to take away everything. The, 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 the mystic uh, Theresa Neumann in Germany uh, during World War II was asked by a priest who was very, very close to her in Rochester. And he said, will the United States go through uh, a war like this? And she said, no. The United States will go through, through poverty, complete poverty. That's, that's what's happening. And uh, so God is going to take everything away from us. And uh, uh, the one thing that we have to do is we can be upset about that or say, Fiat, I want the divine will. I want to live in the divine will. I want to possess the divine will. Now, we have to remember uh, the, uh, Christopher Columbus was a mystic. Uh, and this is something that, this is one of the reasons why there's such animosity towards Christopher Columbus. He was a mystic, and for years he wanted to come, because Jesus told him, uh, if, you, if you read the life of Christopher Columbus, that he would find a, a land where the kingdom of God will be established on earth as it is in heaven. And, and that's why he wanted to come to America, and that's why he wanted the gold, so to give it back to the king and queen of Spain so that they could fight uh, uh, the, the, the religion that was destroying the Catholic faith. And, and what the first thing he did when he came to this land was he consecrated this to Christ. And if you look at Our Lady of, uh, of uh, uh, Guadalupe, it's very clear here, right in the middle, is you ask Hey, when I went to see uh, when I went to see Our Lady of Guadalupe when, in Mexico City, the first time I went there, I thought somebody spray painted that on. It was standing out so hot, so amazing. Now, what's really wonderful is is also what else is on this? It's L U, and there's the I is nothing. S A. So what you have is you have Luis Jesus, you have with Our Lady of Guadalupe, the only image of Our Lady from heaven has USA you know, written on it, and also Luisa. Uh, why? Because God has great plans for the United States. Yet, we're going to have to go through great poverty in order to begin to live the life that God wants us to live. Uh, again, if you're, if you're, everybody seems to be very upset and, and frightened of what's coming. There's only one person that's frightened, and that's the devil. His kingdom is going to come to an end. The, the divine will is going to be established on earth as it is in heaven. The third fiat of, of God is, is here on earth because of the, the newborn, Luisa Picaretta. Our responsibility is to be Catholic so that God can crown his church with this great gift of the divine will. Uh, again, if, if we're interested in, in, in the world, the flesh, and the devil, we, we better let that go and get interested in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit to, to have everything for the glory of God, everything for the salvation, sanctification of souls. Uh, our job is to be Catholic. So, what do we do on Sunday? What is Sunday for us? Just this one aspect. What is Sunday? Do we keep holy the Sabbath? Or, or do we uh, make Sunday another Saturday? Uh, again, do we mow the lawn on Sunday? Do we work on Sunday? Or do we keep holy the Sabbath? Just one aspect of the Catholic faith. You know, Do we make confession a part of our Catholic life? Do we pray the rosary every day? Do we wear the scapular? Do we spend time in front of the Blessed Sacrament? Do we listen to the Holy Father, obey the Vicar of Christ on earth? Again, our life should be Catholic. Nothing less than that. Uh, again, 
the Lord says very clearly, you justify yourselves in the eyes of men. Are you Catholic? God reads your hearts. Are you Catholic? What man thinks important, God holds in, in, in contempt. What is the most important thing of your life? Is, is it receiving the sacraments? Is it being Catholic? Is it, is it having a contemplative life, a Catholic life? Uh, again, you know, when what we have learned in the past 2,000 years is read the lives of the saints. Study the lives of the saints. And now, Jesus says, I want you to live my life. Live my mother's life. How? By reading the book of heaven. It's not called the book of heaven for, for any other reason, but because it is the book of heaven. Our Lord has great, great plans for us. And uh, all he's looking for is the souls that want what he wants. And again, that's to be Catholic. Uh, uh, there's nothing less than that. The, the Protestants are, are, have protested the three blesseds. Blessed are you among women, Mary. Blessed are the fruit of your womb, the Holy Eucharist. And blessed are you, Peter, upon this rock I will build my church. Our responsibility is to make those three blesseds our everything. Jesus, Mary, uh, and now uh, faithful to, faithfulness to the vicar of Christ on earth. Uh, again, when we have these three blessings, then he gives us Louisa. Uh, uh, again, uh, God has great, great plans for the United States. Great plans for us. And what he's looking for, uh, look at, look at just, just read when you read Our Lady of America. It, it's very clear. It says, <clears throat> it says very clearly here, uh, uh, prepare ourselves uh, uh, for the return of your son. <clears throat> it says, uh, open our hearts, our homes, and then to the coming of Jesus, your divine son. With him, reign over us. This is the divine will. And what Our Lady promised Sister Mildred uh, is that the children, of the, uh, the children of America, which are the children of the divine will, will bring purity to the world. That's the, the, the true life of Jesus and the true life of Mary found where? In Louisa. Uh, again, we have to understand what, what God has got planned for us is for uh, his reign on earth, his kingdom established on earth as it is in heaven. And he's asking us, pleading with us, uh, to uh, uh, embrace this gift of gifts, this prodigy of prodigies, Luisa Picaretta and the divine will. Okay. <clears throat> oh, I guess it's catchy. Excuse me. Um, all right. So now we are going to proceed with lesson five of human will versus divine will, the difference between the sanctity of living and doing the divine will. Fiat. The eight, <clears throat> April 1st, 1930. What it means to enter the prime act of the divine will. And this is this is so essential for us to understand. When, when you pray, like so say, for example, you're praying your prayers before uh, a meal. You, you want to pray to enter into the prime act of God, okay? You want to make your, your each step that you take into the prime act of God. The little drops that the creature forms in the sea of light, how God in all created things places as many acts of love for as many times as the soul wants to make use of them, how life has need of nourishment. My poor, Louisa begins, my poor in intelligence feels as though drawn to cross the immense sea of the divine fiat. Okay, so here, what, what our God wants us to do is also cross the immense sea, this ocean of the divine will of God. Now, we can't do it. 
So that's why you hang on to Louisa. She knows how to do this. And within this sea, it goes in search of its acts in order to love them, to adore them, and keep them company. So this is why, uh, you know, Jesus says he wants us to be linked to Louisa. Because she knows how to do this. We don't know how to do it. So always, always, you know, embrace Louisa, go with Louisa. So my poor mind is under the influence of an irresistible force that makes it always go wandering in search of the acts of the supreme volition. But while I was doing this, I thought, what good do I do in going around over and over again in the ocean, the sea of the divine fiat? And people have said that. Why, why do I have to do this? And my sweet Jesus told me, my daughter Louisa, as many times as you go around in the sea of the divine will, so many places you take <coughs> in the divine will, and you form your little drops of love within this ocean that dissolves in the divine will and remains inseparable. <coughs> yeah, it sounds so much better. Okay. <clears throat> And my Jesus, as many times as you go around in the sea of the divine will, so many places you take in the divine will, and you form your little drops within this immense ocean that dissolve in the divine will and therefore remain inseparable. So we are that drop of water that the priest puts in the chalice filled with wine. That drop of water is nothing. Yet when it falls into the cup filled with wine, that drop of water becomes wine. And it's the same thing. We are a drop of nothing. And we enter into the divine ocean of the divine will, we become part of the divine will, and everything that's in this ocean belongs to us. It's, it's, this is what God wants to give us. He wants us to recognize our nothingness, first of all, and, and how God is everything. We are nothing. And that as we enter into this, we become one in God. Uh, God becomes one in us. Okay, and we try and God feel your little drops, your little uh, I love yous uh, that loves us, and then forms one single life with us triune God, and we try and God say, the newborn Luisa Picaretta of our most holy divine will loves us within our divine ocean, not outside of this ocean, and it is right that we try and God give Luisa the rights to let Louisa come into this immense ocean as many times as Louisa wants. So, more so, since Louisa wants nothing other than what we Triune God want, and this is the greatest joy that Louisa brings to us Triune God, as if Louisa were bringing to us Triune God on her lap all of our divine will, and overflowing with it, with it from all sides, Louisa remains eclipsed within its divine light, and then we, Triune God, enjoy seeing Louisa's littleness enclosed within our divine light. So here, even though we are nothing, uh, and God is everything, and, and that's when the illumination of conscience comes, that's what we're going we're gonna to see. We're going to see God alone is holy, holy, holy Lord God of Sabaoth, and we are creatures. All you know, you, you look at Hollywood. Hollywood is always giving an award to somebody, patting somebody on the back. You know, sports are always giving an award to somebody, patting somebody on the back. God alone is holy. God alone is is deserves all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. We're nothing, and yet we're trying to make ourselves, you know, important. And, and, and who is Louisa? Louisa is the little newborn. Jesus says, this is what I love. I love nothing. And the more that we can really be ourselves, our nothing, in our nothingness, the more we can give God glory. So that's what he says. He says, uh, uh, we, see, we enjoy seeing in your littleness enclosed within our divine light. And if you feel the irresistible force coming to do your little rounds in this ocean, the sea of our fiat, and it is the ruling force of the divine will that loves so much to see your littleness forming the little drops of light within this ocean of, of the divine will. This is what it means to enter into the prime act of our volition, that Louisa takes her place in the divine will and Louisa forming the divine will in her little drops. Therefore, 
hold it as a great fortune going around and constantly in our fiat. So that's what God is looking for. He's looking for us to be linked to Louisa to go around in the divine will, to the round of creation, round of redemption. Then I, Louise, was found in the acts of the divine fiat and creation, and it seemed to me that they were all palpitating with love of their creator God towards all mankind. The heavens, the star, the suns, the sea, the air, the wind, uh, all created things are in perfect accord among themselves, so much so that even though they are distinct among themselves, yet they live as though fused together. And this is so true that whenever there is the light of the sun within that same space, there is the air, the wind, the sea, the earth, but each one has his distinct heartbeat of love towards mankind. But while I was thinking of this and other things, my love of Jesus clasped me in his arms, told me, my daughter Louisa, our love and creation was exuberant, but always towards mankind. In each created thing, we placed as many acts of love for as many times as mankind was to make use of them. Our divine fiat that maintains the balance in all creation is the perennial life of it. And as it seems that the soul is about to use the light of the sun, puts our love in exercise to make the soul encounter it within the light that she receives. So, Basically, as, as you see the sun and you feel the warmth of the sun, you encounter the love of God in the light of the sun, the, light, the, the, the warmth of the sun. Uh, and, and therefore, you receive as much as you recognize. If she drinks our love and makes it be encountered, so as to say in her little while, she drinks, I love you. If she breathes the air, our love says to her repeatedly, I love you. If she walks, the earth says to the soul under her steps, I love you. There is that one thing that the soul may take, touch, see, in which our divine love does not make its happy encounter with a soul by saying to the soul, I love you, to give the soul love. But do you know what the cause of so much insistence of our love? To receive in each thing that the soul may take the encounter of her I love you. So the infinite love wanted to meet with the finite love, to form one single love, so as to place in each soul the balance of its love. And since the soul makes use of created things without ever thinking that our um, love comes to meet her in the things that she takes, to hear our repeated refrain, I love you, I love you, and the soul makes use of them without ever ha having a glance for God who is sending them to the soul, to love the soul, uh, and the love of the soul remains unbalanced because not meeting with our divine love, the soul loses its balance and remains disordered in all its acts because it has lost the divine balance and the strength of the love of its God. Therefore, be attentive with your requital of love to repair God for so much coldness of all the other souls. So again, Every time you walk into the sun and you feel the warmth of the sun, it's God saying, I love you. When, you. when you're out in the breeze and you feel the breeze, it's God saying, I love you. When you walk on the cold snow and it crunches, it's God saying, I love you. God, he, Jesus says, uh, Louisa says, how come you made so many bugs? And Jesus said, I could not stop saying, I love you, I love you, I love you. It's all these I love yous. And our response is to give back to God our I love you. He says, this is why he created it, to hear our I love you back to God. Why do you breathe in and then breathe out? God breathes in his I love you. We breathe out our I love you. Why does your heart pump blood in and pump blood out? God pumps his I love you into our heart and we give our I love you back to God. The waves against the shore, it's I love you and the shore gives back. It's, it's, it's the reciprocal love that God is looking for. This is, this is the contemplative life that God is looking for, that we be aware of all the I love yous. I mean, in, in, in the spring, how many I love yous are in the flowers all the way around us? He doesn't make one flower. He makes billions of flowers all around us. It's not one bug, but billions of bugs. The leaves on the tree for fall, it's not one colorful leaf. It's all the leaves that are colorful. It, it's... 
This is what God is. He's expecting us. He's pleading with us to come back to live the life that Adam lost. This is the contemplative life. This is, this is not a holy life, a saintly life, or a good life. This is the life that God breathed into Adam. He breathed the I love you. He wants to hear our I love yous. And, and how do we get them? Where, where do they come from? Louisa. She knows how to do this. So, Louisa says, I continue my round in the acts of the divine will, and I thought to myself, but what is the use for so many times that I go around and around in the supreme fiat to follow its acts? And my sweet Jesus added, my daughter, Louisa, all lives have need of nourishment. Without nourishment, a, per a person neither forms nor grows. If the nourishment is lacking, there is the danger that the life may be taken away from him. Now, following my holy divine will, uniting oneself to its acts, going around and around in the divine will, serves to form the nourishment with which to nourish, forms and makes its life grow in your soul. Okay, so Jesus is showing us how to live. Again, with one with Louisa. Its life can nourish itself with no other acts but those that are done in the divine will. Nor can the divine will form in the soul or grow if the soul does not enter into the divine will by the union of her acts. The divine will forms her uh, in the soul its birth of light to form its life of divine will in the soul. And the more acts of the divine will that the soul forms, the more the soul unites herself with its acts and lives in the divine will, the more abundant food she forms to nourish the divine will and make the divine will grow more quickly within her soul. So Jesus says to Louisa that every act that you do in the divine will is feeding God. It's feeding God. You're nourishing the divine will. And God feeds on our I love yous. So every I love you, I mean, how many times have you fed God today? How many I love you's did you give to God that God nourished himself on? God has given us all these I love you's all around us in creation and redemption. How many of how many of I, I love you's have we given back to God to nourish God? Now think about it. He feeds us with his body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Holy Eucharist. And now he wants to, us to feed him with our I love you's. Uh, how glorious this is. I, is God starving? Are you feeding God with your I love yous? This is what he lives for. He, he, he lives for his I love yous coming back to him from us. The reciprocal love. Uh, all the I love yous are around us and, and we have to begin to see them, to hear them all around us. And we have to give back to God our I love you. I mean, how glorious this is uh, that our God is, is offering an opportunity for us to feed him. Our Lady fed Jesus. And now Jesus is saying, I want, to, I want to be fed. I want to be held. Can you imagine how, how humble our God is that he is willing to uh, uh, allow us to feed him? And again, is our I love you really a beautiful I love you? Or is it just something that we, you know, have extra? When, when we genuflect in, in front of the Blessed Sacrament, is it an I adore you, I love you, I praise you, I thank you, I bless you, I worship you? Or is it just bounce off your knee? When you bless yourself with holy water, is it bless me, Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit? I love you. Or is it... It's, you know, be attentive. Why are you doing what you're doing? Is it, is it to love God with the perfect adoration, perfect glory? Therefore, your going around in the divine will is life that it forms. It is nourishment that serves the development of the life of my divine will in your soul, and it serves to prepare the food to nourish my most holy divine will with the other, in the other souls, past, present, and future. Therefore, be attentive. And do not want to stop. See, we have to begin to see things from Christ's perspective. We have to begin to understand things from Christ's point of view. Uh, again, if we're seeing it only humanly, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't seem important. 
But in God's holy divine will, it is most important. Now we'll end with the prayer of consecration to the divine will. If we can kneel, it will be good. If we can't, it's okay. Prayer of consecration to the divine will. O adorable and divine will, here I am before the immensity of your light, that your eternal goodness may open to me the doors and make me enter into it to form my life all in you, divine will. Therefore, prostrate before your light, I, the littlest among all creatures, come, O adorable will, into the little group of the first children of your supreme fiat, Prostrate in my nothingness, I beseech and implore your endless light that it may want to invest me and eclipse everything that does not belong to you in such a way that it may do nothing other than look, comprehend, and live in you, divine will. It will be my life, the center of my intelligence, the enrapture of my heart and of my whole being. In this heart, the human will will no longer have life. I will banish it forever and will form the new Eden of peace, of happiness, and of love. With it, I shall always be happy. I shall have a unique strength and a sanctity that sanctifies everything and brings everything to God. Here, prostrate, I invoke the help of the sacrosanct trinity that they admit me to live in the cloister of the divine will so as to restore in me the original order of creation just as the creature was created. Celestial Mother, Sovereign Queen of the Divine Fiat, take me by the hand and enclose me in the light of the Divine Will. You will be my guide, my tender mother. You will guard your child, will teach me to live and to maintain myself in the order and the bounds of the Divine Will. Celestial Sovereign, to your, I trust my whole being. I will be the tiny little child of the Divine Will. You will teach me the Divine Will, and I will be attentive and listening to you. You will lay your blue mantle over me so that the infernal serpent may not dare to penetrate into the sacred Eden to entice me and make me fall into the maze of the human will. Heart of my highest good Jesus, you will give me your flames that they may burn me, consume me, and nourish me to form me the life of the supreme will. St. Joseph, you will be my protector, the custodian of my heart. It will keep the, my will in your hands. You will keep my heart jealously and will never give it to me again that I may be sure never to go out of the will of God. Guard an angel, guard me, defend me, help me in everything, so they may eat and may grow flourishing and be the call of the whole world into the will of God. Celestial court, come to my help, and I promise you to live always in the divine will. And may the blood that flowed upon the wood of this cross free us from our human will, that we live in God's holy divine will always. We ask this in Jesus' name, honor the mantle of Mary, through the intercession of Louisa, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, let's thank Sister. If you can be generous with Sister, please do, for get, offering us this beautiful place. God bless you. All righty. Thank you for joining us on the closing lesson of the human will versus the divine will, the difference between the sanctity of living and doing the divine will. Um, one thing Father said in his homily that I think is important to reemphasize is his discussion of the three blesseds, that to live a Catholic life, we must embrace the Blessed Mother Mary, the most blessed Holy Eucharist, and blessed are you, Simon Barjona Peter, upon this rock I will build my church, the blessed Holy Father. To be Catholic, we, we keep these close to our hearts, always remaining united with our Lord through the Blessed Mother. And now our little third mamita, Louisa. Fiat Amen will start a new series next week. And it will be announced um, when it gets announced. Okay, fiat. <laughs>